Because right now, all I want to do is to show the positive aspect because the negative has been too much. Yeah. You know, people are saying go to go and see gorillas. I'm not here for gorillas, bro. Yeah. Because when the white people come, yeah. these are the things that they're gonna show you. Yeah, then why should I also go and show you gorillas? Yeah. No way. I want to show you the beautiful cities. Africa. Hello wonderful peoples, how are you doing today? So I started this YouTube channel to show you guys and girls a different part of Rwanda that is not shown in mainstream media. Well today I have a guest who is on a mission to show Africa to the rest of the world that is not shown in the mainstream media. His name is Bertolt Winkler, who was born in Ghana and at the age of 18 moved to China without knowing anyone there. He quickly learned the language but soon realized that most Chinese people are ignorant about Africans because most Western social media outlets are banned in China. Despite this, he was able to start a successful YouTube channel and educate the rest of the world through comedy and street interviews about life of black people in China. Today he has over 125,000 loyal fans on YouTube who subscribe to his content. Right now he's traveling through Africa to preach a message that resonates very well with me to tell the African story by Africans. I got the chance to meet him right here in Chigali, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about his life and life lessons he learned in China, the positives and negatives of living, vlogging, and dating Chinese women in China while being black, how he managed to open his company in China while being a foreigner, grow his YouTube channel, and travel the rest of the world while showing us Africa through his eyes. My wonderful people, help me welcome the self-proclaimed village boy from Ghana, annoying but shy, hardworking YouTuber, famously known as Wodamaya. I am Maya. <laughs> Wodamaya, how are you doing? Man? I am Maya, I'm great bro, how are yes. you doing? Nice to see you man. <laughs> ah, good to yes. see you too. Finally hooked up, met up. So today we're just going to talk about you, about your endeavors, how you're doing and you know people to get the Rwandan people to get to know you on a different level really? and they know you on the on the videos in the videos <laughs> yes because I, I i don't know if you know what the maya but he makes a lot of videos yeah and it always sounds kind of crazy you know like he's shouting but in real life he's more yeah more calm, calm. you know he's more like a normal person actually uh, yeah. that's pe people say ah that boy that shouts a lot that annoying youtuber <laughs> you know but in real life i'm just a shy yeah. guy man yeah all right all right yeah so that's 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 the, the point of today just okay. chill relax and then yeah. talk about things no problem so what am I? First of all, people know you from your vlogs in China. Yeah. You know, like uh, I'm sure your fans know, but the wonderful people that watch this channel maybe don't. Like, what was your goal? Why did you, as an African guy, want to go to China? Um, I actually did not want to go to China. Okay. I went to China by chance uh -huh. because uh, I got a school in the UK to go and study. Like when I was applying my visa mm -hmm. at the end process. Like they refused me the visa. And you know, you tell all your friends that, hey, I'm going to UK and at the yeah. end of the day, yeah. everything messed up. So like, my brother was like, hey, China is quick. Try it out, <laughs> just to get out of the country. Yeah. Because I've already told all my friends that I'm going to UK and uh -huh. it, it messed up. So I decided to try China. That's why I ended up in China. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, not bad, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and when you arrived to China, what, what was your, so for, for the clearance, you, you are from Ghana. I'm from Ghana, yeah. You were born and raised in Ghana? In Ghana, yeah. yeah and, and so what age was this when you were going to university? No, I've, I've, been, to, I've been in China for 16 years. Mm -hmm. Hey, sorry, sorry, six years in China. When I was going to China, I was 18 years old. That was when I went to China. Okay. So, um, and I, I would say that I won't regret going to China because it was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my entire life because yeah. China made me who I am today. Yeah. So I'm always grateful to China. People say that I love China so much. It's just because, like, I was a young boy who doesn't know anything. First yeah. time of traveling, and you get to a place, different culture, mm -hmm. different language, yeah. and then you got to the chance to meet the local people, and yeah. everything just changed, and I decided to pick up from there. Yeah. Yeah, so at age 18, coming yeah. from China yeah. for the first time, yeah. what was your, like, your first impression of China? What was the thing that really struck you? When, when I was going to China, I thought China is a poor country. Yeah. China is not a place to be. Yeah. But my brother went... I arrived in China, yeah. I was so amazed, like, 
Really? Yeah. Is this China? Uh -huh. Because you know, we used to watch movies, you know, local this local movies and we'd be like, ah, oh, they just like a village or something. Yeah. But when I went there, even their airport, mm -hmm. bro. It was nice. It was really amazing. Okay. And um, I fell in love with the country. Okay. So in, in in your videos you talk mostly about being black in China. In China. Why did you choose for that topic? Because when I was in China, yeah. um for me personally, some things I, I don't really care. Yeah. about how people treat me or if you don't like me or something, I don't really care. Yeah. But when I was in China, I felt like these people, they see black people to be different people altogether because I started speaking Chinese in three months, yeah. right? I had a lot of Chinese friends because I was still like naive, wanted to know things. So yeah. I was able to speak Chinese in three months. Yeah. So when I had Chinese friends, they started asking me some certain questions that I think it's not normal. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you so black? Uh -huh. Why is your, your, your uh, palm like this and your skin color like this? Yeah. You know, why is your hair like this? And I was like, no way. Yeah. These people, like, they don't know anything. Mm -hmm. And I realized that in China, like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, everything is blocked. Yeah. So they don't see what is happening outside the world. Okay. All, they, all they see is like what they hear in China. Yeah. You understand? So I decided like through my experience with my Chinese friends, the kind of questions they were asking me, I decided to use the Chinese that I speak mm -hmm. to teach them something about black people, okay. who we are, yeah. you understand? And I started, I was not getting the support even from my own black people, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. But um, the Chinese people were getting it because I was doing shows in China. Okay. I, like, I was going for shows, just talking about black people and stuff. So later on, I decided to go to YouTube and also do exactly the same thing over there. Yeah. And, and when you started the YouTube, like, you know, like vlogging in China, everything, mm -hmm. like, was it hard? Did, like, did you get, like, resistance, like, from, from the police, from the people around you? Police will not do you anything, even though YouTube is blocked. It was really difficult. It took me two years on YouTube to get uh, my first thousand subscribers. Yeah. And then my own friends were like, hey, stop this shit that you're doing. Yeah. You're not going to get anywhere. And now they see me and they're like, hey, yeah. we're sorry. Even my roommates even discouraged me. Yeah. But the thing is like, I had the passion for it. So yeah. I decided that, okay, let me take a break and come back again. Mm -hmm. So I took a break, like after two years, I got my thousand subscribers. I took a break for some time mm -hmm. and then pick it up again. And within a year of being serious on YouTube, yeah. I had 70,000 extra okay. subscribers. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's yeah. fast, man. Yeah. That's fast. And so, how, was, how would you describe, like, like in short, uh, life in China as a black person now? Life in China as a black person, mm -hmm. I would say it's 50-50. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. It, it's 50-50 in terms of, um, I would say that even Chinese people are not that much racist. Yeah. When I say this, people don't get it. Yeah. But when you go to China, bro, just one thing is, like, forget about what people are saying about you because if you go to america they're going to shoot you yeah. china nobody's going to shoot you yeah. and even china nobody will come and attack you like yeah. hey this is a, they will just insult you online yeah you understand because especially they don't want to see you with their girls you know yeah. so they're just going to insult you <laughs> so life in china like i've seen so many black people being successful on national tv going for shows in china making huge money because in china as a black man if you're a dj yeah. you earn like almost five thousand to six thousand dollars a month a month, you, bro. A month. When I was, when I was even like I was in China translating, I earned like two thousand, two thousand five hundred dollars a month. Yeah. You understand? Just yeah. being like a translator, yeah. and also you go teaching. So even China has have a lot of Africans living in China right now. Yeah. You get it. So me, I will not say China is not good for black people. If you have something like, if you can teach English, mm -hmm. if you can um, being an MC yeah. or being a DJ. Or if you play basketball, that's where the money is. Look at look at this guy. Um, there's one retired American, and he's been, yeah, I wrote me something. Yeah, yeah. They they've now given him the citizen, citizenship in China. He's the first black man. Yeah. I call him like the most powerful black man in China <laughs> right now. But yeah. his career ended in the United States. Yeah. But if he goes to China, he's the king. He's the king, yeah. Why basketball? So yeah. it's it's just fifty fifty for black people. Yeah. So so, but would you say that okay? Um, like so, the racism in in China is there, but it's 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 not that much. Is that what you're saying? There's, there's racism in China. Yeah. There's racism everywhere. But racism in China, yeah, bro, it, it's just they will tell you that I don't. We my kids are scared of black people, so I don't want to employ you. You know, ah. they, it's that kind of thing. Oh, I prefer a white guy. 
Yeah. That's that's kind of you know that, that's the racism in China. But if you go you go to some schools that they will prefer yeah. a black man. Okay. You understand? Yeah, schools that prefer black. Oh people. come on! They, they, uh -huh. What about this one? Like if you want to be a basketball teacher, yeah, they will also say they prefer a black man <laughs> instead of a white man. You understand? Okay. So it, I would say that is the racism in China is just online. They yeah. hate. They, they, they hate like black people. If you see Chinese people hating you online, yeah. you feel sorry, bro. Yeah. Yeah, because even that's one of the reasons why I even stopped posting on Chinese social media. Yeah. Because it was crazy. Well, they were hating you that much. Yeah, because you know, most of the time I do videos with Chinese girls and yeah. not just like, you know, in China we have Chinese girls, like pretty girls, and also we have rejected ones. But I use the pretty girls for my videos and <laughs> like this dude. <laughs> so, all right, all right. Uh, We're gonna talk about the girls in a minute because uh, I see a lot of girls on the YouTube channel. Maybe uh, you can explain something there, man. No problem. Bro. Yeah, but so, but how do you how do you deal with those like um uh, yeah insults? Because I'm I'm sure if you're getting a you're getting a lot. You're yeah. black. You're online, and China is big. Yeah. I got. Well, how did you deal with that to kind of like persevere and stay there, and not just bro, say like I'm going back to bro, Africa, man? Whatever, whatever somebody say about me. I don't care because yeah. you don't know me in real life. Yeah. If, you know, when I started YouTube, I used to delete my videos, bro. Yeah. Like when I see a lot of people hating me on that video, yeah. I just go, oh God, I cannot take this anymore. I just delete the video. Yeah. I lost like two or three, four videos <laughs> that if I left by now, it would have gotten a lot of views, but I yeah. deleted all of them just because of the hate. Yeah. But I got to understand that even people are hating you, yeah. or there are other people who are showing you love. Yeah. And why don't you pick the positive aspect and leave the negativity to be on its own? Yeah. That is why, like, I don't, I don't say Chinese people are racist. Whatever you're gonna tell me, I don't yeah. care. You understand? I know where I wanna go, mm -hmm. and it doesn't affect me. Your insults makes me stronger. I can even learn from it, and then use it yeah. in my next video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, ah, all right. So, so talking about the the, the social life in, in China, yeah. Like, how is it to be, uh, you know, like living a social life, and you know, it's, in, it's it's absolutely awesome. Yeah, the social life in China is awesome. I think a lot of Africans even um, changed. Yeah. I would use the word change. Like they change from being good kids mm -hmm. to like sport kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because when you go to China, there are three things. Yeah, it's either you become a womanizer, mm -hmm. or you become a drunkard. Or you become one, uh, somebody Smoke. who smokes cigarette. Yeah. So every every person in China, every guy in China yeah. has one one of these. Yeah. If you don't smoke, definitely you. Be, and there are people who also have all the three. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the system in China because clubbing mm -hmm. is everywhere in China. Yeah. And um, alcohol is very cheap in China. Yeah. Cigarette is very cheap in China. And women is everywhere in China. Yeah. So this is the social life. This is how it is. Like party every day. Yeah. And the education system is not all that strong. So more boys like have days and to. Yeah, you know, just to chill around. Chill around, that's all. Okay. Like, it's really so, awesome. But are, are you are, are you single now? Right now? Yeah. I'm single right now and also like, you know, you know what, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. how it is. <laughs> but, so, but like how, so, because why I'm asking, like, because okay. you know, when you're in China, and yeah. you know, you're like, you're single, so you're free to do whatever you no, want. Yeah, you know? but when I was in China, I was not single. Yeah. Well, I, I, I became single, like, I think last year, July. Yeah. And I was like, no way, I'm not entering into this relationship thing again. <laughs> yeah. I just want to, you know, keep it that way, you yeah, know, yeah. like, you know, that's how it is. Okay. <laughs> but so, but you know, you have experience with dating, like, Chinese girls? Of course. Like, I, yeah. I think I've tried, living in China, I tried almost every race. Yeah. So, <laughs> I got, like, yeah. I got experience of all those things, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. Now, of course, true, most people don't know much about China and also maybe, like, the Chinese culture. Culture, yeah. uh, so, but just in short, like, how is it, you know, as an African dating like a pure Chinese girl? Yeah, if you're dating a Chinese girl, all you need to do is like have patience. If you don't have patience, you're gonna do unnecessary things, like yeah. because they are, uh, like, even if you talk, if you have a Chinese girlfriend, if yeah. you talk to your mom, she'll yeah. even be angry, thinking that you're talking to another girl. Your mm. mom, you know, <laughs> like, their jealousy is on another level, mm. you know. And um, the thing is, like, you know, when you go to black, that kind of thing, it works in China too. Yeah. So whenever, like, you give it to her, she feels like, hey, yeah. you are her everything. Yeah. So she wants to control you sometimes. And I, I think that is also a cultural difference. And also, like, most of them don't really know how to you know, feed an African man, like, you know, the food. Uh -huh. uh, and also, that's also a problem because if you tell a Chinese girlfriend, hey, give me something to eat, you're gonna make some thing that you think you, you cannot even eat. So uh -huh. that's another thing that. Okay, okay. Me. 
All right, all right. And and so and and when you are dating there, um, is it like an advantage being black, or do you think also the disadvantage? No, um, the, there's an advantage and disadvantage. Yeah. Advantage is that she supports you. You know, okay. like you, you're trying to you're living in a country which is not your home country. Yeah. You know, sometimes you have to survive. Man has to survive, and yeah. not everything like me dating a foreigner. Let me say, dating a black girl in China, yeah. it sometimes it costs me a lot. Yeah. Like, because you have to go out, everything is, you are the man, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you are the father. But dating a Chinese girl in China, mm -hmm. it's like, hey, what do you need? You know, what do you need? Even you spend, but you spend less. Yeah. And that, that's the advantage. Disadvantage is like, you know, I don't know, maybe people are gonna, people are married or something, but it's advantage, they, 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 the Chinese women really love sex so much, right? Like, that's a disadvantage, like, you're gonna kill you. Like, that's this a disadvantage. That's a disadvantage, because, no, okay. the, no, 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 no it's a, it, I don't know how you're gonna see it, but it's like, if she's with you, yeah. she, she, like, she wanted, like, all day long. All day bro. long. Hey, bro, that's a disadvantage. <laughs> Okay, I guess there's something to say for both sides. Eh? Sometimes you're tired, but sometimes exactly you're, you're not. <laughs> eh? Okay, but so but okay, let's let's switch back to like to Africa now. Eh? Okay, because good. like you were you were born in Ghana. I was born in Ghana. Raised in Ghana. Raised in Ghana. How is life in Ghana? Life in Ghana. Yeah. It's awesome, but too expensive. You know. Expensive. Yeah. More expensive than China. Of course, bro. Yeah. Of course, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't know, man. We yeah, never been to I China, Because man. I live in China, even if I'm broke, I still eat every day. Okay. When I'm broke. But Ghana, you're broke, you cannot eat. You cannot eat. And there's so many places in China, even if you're broke, you can go. Yeah. But in Ghana, come on. If yeah. you're broke, you can't go anywhere. Yeah. That's all how right. it is, yeah. Okay. No, China, like you say your videos, is like the land of gold. Is yeah. it still the land of gold? It's... China is the land of gold. It's land of opportunities, bro. Yeah. Land of opportunities. All you need to do, follow whatever they're doing. Yeah. You know, know your aspect. Yeah. And go for what you want. Okay. So I, I always tell people, don't don't listen to people. There's so many things you can acquire in China if you're smart. Yeah. I have a company in China, bro. Yeah. I have what a, kind of company? I have an import and export company in China. Yeah. But I ask people, like people, when I tell people, people like, how did you? Register your own company. I thought you cannot do it as a foreigner, but I did it in one month. And yeah. I, I now have my own visa. I can go to China anytime, any day. You yeah, get exactly. up. You understand? Yeah. So it's just being smart, know who to move with, have a lawyer Chinese friend, and you're okay. <laughs> lawyer Chinese friend? Yeah, because no, Chinese people are not lawyer. Yeah. Yeah, they're not lawyer. So you need to get somebody who is loyal to you. Okay. Because most of them focus on money more than human being. So you need okay. to get somebody who loves human being that money. Okay. I've had a lot of like a lot of Chinese friends, yeah. but most of them wanted to use you. Yeah. So I was able to grab that loyal one, and we've been friends for like six years now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man, that's cool, and that's working out. Yeah. And and and, and right now, you know, 2019, you are you are making like an Africa an Africa tour into the world. Why why what made you start this Africa tour? Africa to the world tour. I decided this because um, we've been hearing a lot about Africa. Yeah. Like Africans are so relaxed, waiting for the whites, the Asians to come and tell our story for us. Yeah. You know, this has been going on for decades, bro. Yeah. Like they come, they say, "Oh, this is how Africa is." And the thing is, like, I don't blame them sometimes yeah. because in Europe. He sees something like, you know, this kind of road, yeah. like what I'm seeing in Kigali, like it's really beautiful, but he has been seeing it in his country, so he yeah. doesn't get fascinated about that. Yeah, exactly. But what he, he or she get fascinated about it, about the people not wearing clothes. Oh, when I went to Africa, they were not wearing clothes. Oh, I saw gorillas in Africa. You know, these are the stories that. Oh, okay. I forget, there's a limit on this one. Oh, okay. I need to check. All right, cool. All right, so um, you, you, were, you were telling, so we got interrupted if you're right, listening okay. to this, but we're right. going to continue right away. All right, good. Yeah. So you're telling that the, the, um, the, the, the stories. The stories, like yeah. the stories that they've been telling us, they've been feeling the world, it's what I want to take my time and yeah. change it one after the other. Yeah. You understand? I want to change everything one after the other. Yeah. I know it's going to be difficult. I've started it already, and I know more people are going to join the movement as time goes on. So I feel like um, I need to start for other African YouTubers to, to come together. So what I'm doing right now, every country that I go to, mm -hmm. I try to find YouTubers, but it's just that sometimes they don't even reply your messages, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I wanna meet all of you so yeah. that we start telling our own stories. Yeah. 
you know, it's better to hear a story from an African than yeah. from a foreigner. Yeah. So this is what I'm doing. Coming to, I started from um, Ghana, mm -hmm. I went to Ethiopia, and now I'm in um, Rwanda. All right. Yeah. And after Rwanda, you're going to? I go to Kampala. And after Kampala? I go to Tanzania. And then? From Tanzania, I go back to Ghana. Okay. Because my friend is coming from the UK. Then I meet him then. From there, I go to Nigeria. All right. Yeah. So you have the whole year plan the whole something. year plan the whole year like i'm gonna be i'm not gonna be i'm gonna go back to china mm -hmm. in april okay um because my company is there for yeah. like one month uh -huh. and then after one month i'm gonna fly back uh -huh. i do the southern part like so right now my, my purpose my goal is to travel to all the 54 african countries in 2019 yes then the next year if 2020 it's all about teamwork yeah but right now i'm doing it everything by myself so yeah. later i'm gonna do teamwork i need to survey everything by myself and see what to do yeah. So one of the things that I also admire about you yeah. is that you have like a really sick work ethic because the good thing now you can see your work, yeah. you know, it's like people say I've done this in the past, but now you have like YouTube have online, oh, yeah. people can go back and see that like, this guy's made so many videos, this is, yeah. this is so many things, so it is just by itself it is a lot yeah. that, you, that you have done and you know next to your other yeah. life. So where do you get the motivation to persevere? The motivation is the comment that I get from the people. Yeah. Because people will watch, I love you so much. Bro, like, I showed your video to this person and she changed her perception about Africa. Yeah. I showed your video to this person and she said she's coming with me to Africa. Yeah. You know, those comments from people yeah. who, which motivate me to do more videos. Yeah. Because right now, all I want to do is to show the positive aspect because the negative has been too much. Yeah. You know, people are saying, go to go and see gorillas. I'm not here for gorillas, bro. Yeah. Because when the white people come, yeah. these are the things that they're going to show you. Yeah, then exactly. Why should I also go and show you gorillas? Yeah. No way. I want to show you the beautiful cities. And, and when, like, when you were starting, when you were like, posting videos, you get like two comments, five comments, <laughs> you know? Like, how did you make it through those times <laughs> when you post the video for so much uh, hours bro, and you get like bro, 100 views, man? And they, you know, I used to make videos and it, within like a week, you don't even have a comment. How do you feel, bro? <laughs> <laughs> But this time around, even, you know, you have to tell your friends, hey, can you go and comment that, say nice video or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my friends will say, dope. <laughs> <laughs> but now, like, one second, I got like 10 people saying I'm the first person, second, two, yeah. Yeah. it's just one of the best feelings ever, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Also, but what did you do to make it through those times when you're like, bro, not, like not um, being seen by a lot no, of people? No, it's just a matter of hard work. Yeah. You don't have to rush, just do your thing, yeah. just do your own thing, you know. The, my breakthrough, I had just one video. Mm -hmm. YouTube is just one video. Yeah. I was doing videos, bro, I was doing videos, I was not getting subscribers. Only one video, in a day, I had 300,000 views in less than a day. Less like, than a day? Like, less than 24 hours. I had wow. like 300,000 views and that boosted my channel from 1,000 to 10,000 subscribers. Yeah. So from there, that's when people started watching my other videos that I've done so many years ago. So, many, yeah. so all I, I can say that if you are starting a YouTube channel, yeah. if you don't, don't worry yourself about the comment section. Mm -hmm. Worry about, worry about uh, what to put out there to make people like what you're creating. Yeah. You understand? It's because YouTube is just one video. Yeah. If you have a viral video, mm -hmm. one, yeah. it will blow up your channel and people will start watching your own videos. Look at me coming to um, um, uh, Ethiopia, when I went to Ethiopia. When I was in Ghana, I had less views, bro. Like, my views yeah. went down. Yeah. But when I went to Ethiopia, oh my God, it, it rise up, yeah. and then now I came to this place, and it's even More. way up. Like I'm getting over a thousand subscribers a day. Yeah. So which is something that is good because if I say that, oh, I'm not getting the subscribers before, so I have to stop now. Yeah. I wouldn't have getting the subscribers now. Okay. And now maybe you're still, you know, you're still working hard, still yeah. doing. Um, yeah. So where do you find the motivation, uh, like the inspiration, I must say, for your videos? It's, that's what I have already, you know. I, I never had friends because of YouTube channel. Yeah. Because of YouTube, because all my friends discouraged me yeah. when I started my channel. So talking of inspiration, like sometimes I see other YouTubers. There's this guy that I love so much, Lao Shu. His name is Lao Shu. He's an American, American who speaks like almost 40 languages, mm -hmm. like different languages. He's yeah. the, I would say he's my biggest inspiration on YouTube. Yeah. Apart from that, I normally watch people for fun, like just yeah. like that. And what really motivates and inspires me a lot yeah. is the people. Yeah, I came to Rwanda, 
Like this morning, I started running. I joined the people. You know why? Yeah. Because I met two. Fun. I was just standing on the roadside, and I met two people. Yeah. They were like, "Are you the guy on YouTube? Yeah. Are you the guy that I've been watching?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm the one." He's like, "Oh, the guy was so happy." Then I had to. He was jogging, so I had to just jog and talk yeah. with him because I cherish my subscribers yeah. so i had to follow him and uh, yeah. that's why you couldn't get me this morning <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those, those are the people that inspires me when i meet people and like yeah. i love your work and uh, it keeps me the motivation to keep doing my thing yeah, yeah. and how do you keep doing your thing because you said like you 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 don't have a lot of friends yeah so th does it get lonely sometimes when you're doing like no. youtube all the time no bro no bro not at all yeah. it's not like i don't have friends I have um, people, close friends that yeah. I talk to, but I don't have so many friends. Bro. Yeah. My circle is really small. Yeah. I have fans that they want to talk to me, but I won't call those people friends, but, yeah. but I have like two or three people. But the next thing is, I, I, like, I'm a workaholic, man. I yeah. concentrate on my, on my work and my business and stuff like that. That's yeah. all I'm much more interested. Before, I used to have a girlfriend that we used to like, talk about everything. Like, she knows my in and out. But when things go, messed up yeah. hey I, ha I still have some girls that i talk to but yeah. you know that kind of thing yeah yeah so d would you say do you, do you maintain some kind of like work-life balance do you have like sometimes when you kind of like settle time apart to just to to, to chill with your friends i do it all the time yeah i do it all the time no i don't work every day yeah because um there's a t like tonight i'll be going out with um the friends that i met in kigali yeah. who helped me tonight i'll go out yeah. chill together and yeah. then come out like i do it but it's not like it's not something that i do it like let's say Oh, these are my friends. Let's go and drink. Let's yeah. go and do. No, no, no. Yeah. That, I feel like I'm wasting my time when I do that all the time. Okay. Yeah. And and looking into the uh, the future, like what are your 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 biggest goals for the coming future? My biggest goal, if I achieve this, I'll stop YouTube. Yeah. Is to bring Africans, young Africans. Yeah. Together. Yes. To tell the real story of Africa. Yeah. To the world. I want us to change the image of Africa yeah. that people have been seeing yeah. with true young Africans, yeah. I want us to change this. Yeah. This is my goal. This is my biggest goal. That's, this is one of the reasons I'm, I'm on YouTube. Yeah. So when I achieve this, I've started already. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing people together. And you know, Africans, they want to know who you are before they start talking to you. Yeah. So I have to keep on raising the standard, like getting yeah. the subscribers. And from there, you can start bringing all of them together. Yeah. And, what, and what motivated you to, to make this, this goal? Is it something that you... Yeah, it, something that motivated me, I would say that um, Afri we Africans, right? Mm. Okay, let me, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Like, um, African leaders, right? Yeah. Like, I've seen, I've been to so many countries, mm -hmm. and I see that most of them don't really care about us. They care about themselves and the family, yeah. right? So if we don't find a way to change this, we too will grow up yeah. and we start doing exactly the same thing that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And our generation and generation will keep on doing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. So this is what I noticed. You see, look at Rwanda. Rwanda is doing so well. Why? Because the president doesn't think about himself. He thinks about the country. Yeah. This is what I'm expecting young Africans who are coming up to do, yeah. you understand? So these are the things that I've, I've noticed mm -hmm. and I feel like I'll have to change this yeah. before it get out of hands. Mm -hmm. Because Africa is suffering. Look at, look at roads in Rwanda, bro. Like, mm -hmm. it's not that we cannot do it. We can't do it, but these people are using our money. These people are taking the money without thinking. Yeah. So I'm just finding a way so that the young Africans coming up mm -hmm. will not do exactly the same thing like yeah. Well, these people are doing it. Yeah. So this is my biggest like goal, and I have to start from somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, you're right. You're right on that, and you are really on, on your way, to be honest, because it yeah. is inspiring. Yeah. Because just alone, if you look at this YouTube and, and this, uh, I mean, I like to, to read the comments, <laughs> you know, because that's where it's happening. That's what people are talking and giving their opinion, and you, so you get like a view how it is perceived yeah. from uh, from the other side. Yeah. So, but talking about more like about Africa. Yeah. So, how many African countries have you visited now? I have African countries that I've been to right now. It's not, it's not more than ten. Not more than ten. No more than ten. But uh, in 2019, yeah, I'll go for the 454. <laughs> All right, so now we are recording this in February. Okay. You know? So, in, in, but in February, I think, I, I, 
I'll be done, you know. Like yeah. I don't think I'll go like I'll go to any other country. So in February, let's say, mm -hmm. let's make it like nine countries so far. Mm -hmm. In February, nine countries, and I'll go back to China and come back again. And and so what what um, what, what do you think of uh, Rwanda so far? Like what has been your first bro, impression, man? Bro, my asking me about Rwanda, yeah. I would tell you that I'm not saying this because you are Rwandan, yeah. but I would say this because coming here. I said this is the best African country that I've ever stepped my foot. Yeah. I've never been to so many countries. That's yeah. what I'm saying. This is the best one. That all the countries that I've visited. Yeah. This is the best one. Yeah. It's well organized. Like everything is under control. People know what to do at this time and what not to do at this time. Because I thought like, you know, I used to do videos saying that in Africa the law does not work. But hey, in Rwanda, man, the mm. law is working, bro. Mm. You see, people are even scared to hold camera. Like, I don't know if you know. <laughs> my, my camera guy, I was like, hey, shoot the thing. He's like, no, this place, no camera. Like, he's even scared. He has some fear in him that if he does this, I wanted to cross the road. They said there's grass, I cannot pass there. I was like, oh, wow, nice. So I have to go and use the, you know, yeah. the law and the rules and regulations work in here. And I wish this is how all African countries can learn from. Because if you go to China, bro, the law works. Yeah. If you if you eat the government's money, they're gonna kill you. Wow. We all know, and they're gonna show to the whole public that they're killing you. So everybody's scared. So when you go to China, they said this road, do this road. Within ten days, when you come, the contractor has finished. He gives them the road. He's gone. <laughs> so this is what I want to see, bro. Like if you go to China, that's what I'm saying. That like living in China really helped me to see things. Yeah. They work so hard. Yeah. Chinese, the only thing I would say I don't like about Chinese people, me, if you ask me what I don't like, it's how they cherish like money of a human being. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's the only thing. They, they cherish money of a friendship. That's the only thing I, I dislike about Chinese people. But apart from that, they are hardworking people. I learned, I was not hard, I was so lazy, bro. Yeah. But living in China, hey, you know, I meet other YouTubers, they're like, no way. Mm -hmm. Why are you so hardworking? Why? Because I live in China. Man. That's it. That's it. I, I learned from Chinese people. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I well, yeah. I guess that's not a bad example, man. China is on the rise. Uh, yeah. it's, it's it's making big big strides, it, man. It's uh... bro. They work twenty four hours. Yeah. Like you go to China. Let's say this road. They are making this road. Yeah. Your house is here, and in the next month you don't pass this place. Yeah. Bro, when you come back, everything here has changed. Yeah. That is how I do my things. Like when you saw me and a thousand subscribers, the next day you come, yeah. it's on. Because no, not everybody watch your videos every day. Yeah, you come and you subscribe and go. Yeah. Next time you come, like people are like, I, I subscribed to your channel last week, you were 100,000 wide, today you are, you know, that kind of thing. And, and speaking about the hard work, so how, yeah. does, is the hard work paying off now? Bro, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. It's really paying off. And yeah. I even cried this morning. I was like, no way, because yeah. I had a target for this month yeah. to have like 120,000 subscribers. Yeah. I started the month with um, 100, and it's not, it's not up to 110, it's like 109, something like that. Mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, I want to work extra harder to get 120, so I'm going to put two videos in a day. Yeah. So I started the two videos in a day on the 9th of February, yeah. and today is 18th or 17th? I think it's 18th. Uh, today is 18th. Yeah. And See, yeah. I've surpassed my 120,000. I'm on 121,000. I've got over 3 million views in a month yeah. in, in, in this, these days. So. so would you say a uh, career as a YouTuber is, is, is pays the bills or do you think it's still like... You know? it's, it's, <laughs> I don't know how much people like, um, get paid, yeah. but I've been traveling around the world mm -hmm. with just YouTube money without support from anybody. Yeah. I came to Africa like with YouTube money. Yeah. I'm, I book my ticket in and out because yeah. I don't, I do everything by myself yeah. with my YouTube money. So everything that I do, I don't even, if people donate to me, fine. Because I realize that even Africans, they want, they want to donate to you, they will ask you what are you using the money for, what I, I just tell you, if you want to help me, help me. If you don't want to help me, it's okay. Yeah. But my YouTube money, always. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it grows every time, and yeah. that's what I use it for. Any um, so, that I take. So you you reinvest the YouTube money into the traveling. That, that yeah, and and and, it, and it, when the thing is like when you travel like that, you don't lose anything, bro. Yeah. You don't lose anything. Like 
let's say I book a flight ticket from Ghana to this place. Yeah. It was around $542. Yeah. Okay, so I booked the ticket. Now, the views that I have on YouTube, yeah. I've surpassed, like, I've, this is my biggest income. Like, I've, I've made whatever I have lost, like, yeah. three times. Yeah. Whatever I've lost, like, traveling around my hotel boats, and even the money for my, for my subscribers yeah. that, oh, keep up the good work. Yeah. That will even pay for my hotel bills. Yeah. So I invest the other ones in my little business that I'm doing. I invest the other ones in my... Because YouTube, you have to invest. Yeah. You have to travel. Yeah. Go and make videos. Yeah. So you invest and you get the money back. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, as a YouTuber, if you have over 10,000 subscribers, you don't lose money when you're traveling. Maybe you don't know the tricks. That's another thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, you know, you need to tell me those tricks, man, because, you know, I'm a starting YouTuber, I yeah, like to call myself, yeah. to make it happen uh, like that. So, um, uh, other than YouTube and the, and the import-export companies, do, do you have other incomes that you... Uh, uh, yeah, I have income, like I do adverts for people. Yeah, all, I online. Use, on, I use my, I use their songs in my videos, some of the songs in my videos are from people. People are like, this song is annoying, hey, mm -hmm. it's a paid... Art, so ah, so people can pay, give you their songs, songs, and yeah. using your videos, and they get you get they get paid, you get views too, yeah, and you get paid, yeah. and then like you know like the YouTube system, I I can say that if I really want to do YouTube full time, getting the crew like behind me, yeah, I don't even need to do anything, yeah, because the YouTube world can even make you who you are. I don't know because when you when you come to Africa. Even as a YouTuber, I think I'll get money more than a doctor. Yeah. Somebody who is a full-time doctor. Yeah. If I really focus on my YouTube channel. Yeah. And then apart from the money you get on accent, people donate to you. Apart from the donation, you also have like your, you know, your normal money that you get. But yeah. I think it's like I really don't focus about the money. Oh no, I know I'm getting the money, but that's mm -hmm. not part of my destiny. Me, my most important thing is the message that I'm preaching. Yeah. And the people who are listening to me. That's yeah. All. Yes. All right. Um, I think we should keep it at that. Okay. Um, is there anything else you would like to add that we... Um, I would just say that in life, yeah. all you need to do is to live your life, yeah. you know, and then learn new things, mm. learn from your mistakes, and then go out there and explore the world. Yeah. That's all. That's how I live my life, bro. And you, would you have any other, like, last advice for, like, young let's say, Africans who are trying to do like what you have done to achieve your success. Just have patience. Yeah. Work hard. Yeah. And we surely make it. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> very nice message, my brother. Uh, thank, thank you so very much. much thank you, thank nice you for coming to my channel, man. People are going to love this. <laughs> and appreciate your time and effort. In thank it. you so it's, much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Guys, go check out Wodenbaya's YouTube channel in the description below. I'm thinking about making more interviews like this and putting them out on a podcast. What do you think? Would it be something you would watch or listen to? Um, let me know. And maybe what kind of guest you would like me to interview. All right. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bravo,